Hello my friends, you're looking dashing. Now, my blog today may contain content that could be upsetting to you. So please, keep your nitro handy. Let me start out with an order that prohibits taking pictures of coffins of fallen war heroes when they arrive at Dover. You may disagree with me on that, but I think the victims of Bush's fraudulent war deserve better than being returned undercover, so as to disguise that the war started to remove Hussein because he was a bad man had real life consequences. Or shall I say real death consequences. Oh, and please, don't bother commenting that the war was necessary because Hussein had links to Al-Qaeda. I showed, among others, in my blog, Bush War Games, the George W.I.I. module, that according to witnesses, the war was planned nine months before 9-11. In the very beginning, there was a conviction uh, that Saddam Hussein was a bad person and that he needed to go. Washington Post reports that the Pentagon is rethinking its policy of denying our war heroes the attention they deserve instead of hiding them behind a curtain of silence. Oh, and while we are at it, how about we get the hell out of Iraq? It may be news to the Pentagon, but if I recall properly, we export billions of our capital into Iraq and that money has no positive impact on our economy whatsoever as I have shown previously. In a global view, the German magazine Der Spiegel, in its English version online site, published an interview with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. In that interview, Lavrov said, We can no longer afford the luxury of little geopolitical games because we all face challenges that directly affect our citizen. The Spiegel interviewer, Something needs to happen. The Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty will expire at the end of this year. Lavrov answers. Over the past three years, we have repeatedly urged the Bush administration to engage in serious talks. We wanted a new agreement to replace the old one. At the time, America was not yet ready for negotiations. Beagle. What is Russia's position on the issue? Lavrov's answer. We favor disarmament, placing ceilings on the number of warheads and missiles, but also maintain existing control mechanism. He continues, Apparently, the Obama administration understands better than the Bush administration the importance of disarmament and arms control. Now, let me give you a second opinion on the current discussion over who authorized the torture. You may have read my report on the torture of a Pakistani, published on January 28, 2009, entitled Chertov, the Iceman and the Torture Squad. The victim was tortured in the ICE office in Fayetteville, Arkansas, by tasering him until he was unconscious, by dousing him with ice water and by beating him for days. When he did not admit anything, he was given a blank piece of paper to sign and deported to Pakistan, despite the fact that he lived in the States since 1980 and was married to an American citizen and had two American-born citizen children. His wife traveled to Pakistan and now is not allowed to return to the United States, even though she was born in the United States and is a U.S. citizen. That is, unless she divorced the Pakistani. By now you understand already that this country has been run by criminals for the last eight years. I informed the White House counsel Greg Craig by certified letter of the case in order to avoid that my complaint would be intercepted by Bushies still working at the Department of Justice. Needless to say, nothing happened. Apparently, White House legal counsel Craig is not interested in issues of torture tourism. But this is not the only case. The British newspaper Daily Mail reported that the same thing happened to a British student who was brought to Guantanamo 
tortured there until he confessed, then found innocent, but was not allowed to return to England, despite the fact that his family and only relatives live in London. British Home Secretary Charles Clark was informed, but refused to intervene. In other words, Britain is an accomplice to the American torture schemes. The University of California, Davis, Center for the Study of Human Rights, published an analysis of publicly available government documents, which concluded that the U.S. Department of State underreported to the United Nations by 50 percent the number of juveniles seized and sent to Guantanamo. You got that right. We lied to the United Nations to cover our misdeeds. But wait, why children? As I will show you in a moment, they used torture on children to get their fathers to confess. But before I get there, here's one specific problem that may come back to haunt us. The post-traumatic stress disorder of torture victims. You may remember that of the 800 or so Gitmo detainees, we released about 500, despite torture unable to prove any terrorist activities. According to the Bushies, 62 of the released were so pissed off that they joined Al-Qaeda. Others were and are unable to hold the job. In the case of a German national, El Masri, who was outsourced by the CIA for torture to Afghanistan and eventually released when it could no longer be hidden that he had been confused with somebody else. El Masri got into legal trouble after he finally returned to Germany. Of course, now everybody says, you see, ever heard of the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder? I didn't think so. Now, you may have heard that the Bush clan used two attorneys to get a home-free opinion that torture was legal. Good Lord, I cringe saying this. One of these guys was already the subject of a demand for investigation by the National Lawyers Guild, John Yo. Here is an excerpt of an interview that you can find on YouTube and that explains why we brought children to Gitmo. The interviewer asks, if the president deems that he's got to torture somebody, including by crushing the testicles of the person's child, there is no law that can stop him? Yo's answer, no treaty. The interviewer continues. Also no law by Congress, that is what you wrote in your August 2002 memo? Yours answer, I think it depends on why the president thinks he needs to do that. Get this, John Yo teaches our children at the University of California, Berkeley. Guys, I'm getting sick to my stomach. I'll see you tomorrow. By the way, you have no idea how important you are for my job. Before I let you go. Mr. President, please don't make us accessories after the fact by not prosecuting the monsters who are responsible for these atrocities, Cheney, Chertoff, etc.